every one of us to realize when we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. You're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. Because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives Him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. 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 Because that's what makes God happy. Amen. You're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. Well, Victoria Olstein could not have said it better herself in regards to exposing not only her and her husband, but the satanic church that is on Main Street and also on the back roads today. We're rebuking probably 99 plus percent of the churches out there. They do not preach the real Jesus. They never preach holiness or repentance from sin. They preach that you live in sin and somehow that this magic Jesus with a small J hovers over you. And no matter what you do on earth, you are saved by grace and there's nothing you have to do at all. Well, they are Galatians 1, 8 and 9, which says they are accursed. Blessed are they that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for you shall laugh. You know, it's amazing how these churches are full, full with people that just have itching ears. They just want to be entertained. They're comfortable in their sin. When the Bible says, Jesus says, go and sin no more. Let me tell you, you are full and you're fat and you're going to be shut um, because you're laughing now. You shall mourn and weep for eternity. And I'm just pleading with you here in this video to continue listening. There's not one Bible verse that speaks about the apostles or Jesus, quote, hanging out and laughing and entertaining each other in the flesh. 160,000 souls go to judgment every day. That's how many people die every day. Do you know that 21,000 are under the age of five years old because of man-made poverty, because you could do better? If you were a true disciple of Christ, you would be doing everything in your power to witness to as many people as you can on a daily basis and also to pour, and or to support those who do. You would not pay tithes to a devil in a church. You truly could care less in your false belief because you're comfortable in it. You are sitting under a sinning pastor leading a sinning church. You have hate for your neighbor, not love. You could be in all the small groups you want and go on the little fancy vacations and retreats and all that. You couldn't be farther from Jesus. Let's see in a few places here in the Bible where laugh or laughter is used in the New Testament. Matthew 9, 24 says, and he says unto them, give place for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Luke 8, 53 says, and they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. I don't see laughter. You, I don't see Jesus going around laughing and skipping around and handing out water bottles to his neighbor saying, Jesus loves you. No, he says, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen to the conditions you have to uh, abide by to get saved by the Lord Jesus. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God and resist the devil. And he will flee from you. You must draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Bible says in James 4, 9, be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Does your hellbound pastor say this in your emergent Main Street church? Most likely not. I plead with you to listen to the rest of this exhortation. We've got about 20 more minutes. And then we have many videos following this up with the lies of the emergent church. I pray you stay with me. If your church allows sin, why are you partaking in that church? The church is not for sinners. You probably just fell off your chair right now. Listen, 1 Timothy 5.22 makes it very clear. Now listen, you might not hear some things in here that you like, but Jesus was not a friend of sinners. Okay, John 15, 14 says, you're my friends, Jesus speaking, you're my friends, if you do whatever I ask you to. Are you doing that? Not if you're a sinner. 
First Timothy 5.22 says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be a partaker of other man's sins. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Jesus is not going to keep you pure. His righteousness is not imputed unto you if you're in willful sin. First Timothy 5.21 says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. You most likely are a respecter of persons. You will not call your family out of sin. Thus, Luke 12, 51 and 53 and Matthew 10, 34 to 36, which says enemies shall be in your own household does not pertain to you. You're not calling your family and your old friends out of sin because you're in sin if you're in one of these churches. The churches are full of God-haters, and we know this. The Bible tells us that the churches are full of God-haters. We go to Proverbs 8. 30. Well, let's go to John 14, 15. First says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Are you loving him? If you love me, obey my commandments. And John 15, 14, which I touched on before, says, you are my friends if, if you do whatever I ask you. Are you his friends? Are you doing everything he asks you? Listen, Proverbs 8.36, But he that sinneth against me wrongs his own soul. All that hate me loves death. If you sin against the Lord, um, you are in big trouble with the Holy God. And you have to understand that. Your pastor is not telling you that sin leads to death. And sin absolutely leads to death. In other words, the churches are full of sinners that are anathema. Anathema means accursed. Are you accursed? Um, Jesus is coming back to destroy you. We must understand this. If you're sitting under a pastor that's taking your, quote, tithe, right? Um, do you think that he would uh, preach to you as to offend you or preach a soft message? Listen, 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Maranatha, that means let him be anathema, let him be accursed. And if you love him, you have to keep his commandments. I plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you come out of these false churches. Let's go to 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18. 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18. You, you probably don't have these um, verses spoken to you ever. 1 Peter 4, 17 to 18 says, For the time... His come, the judgment must begin at the house of God, and it must first begin at us. What shall the end of them be that do not obey the gospel? What is your end? Listen to 1 Peter 4.18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? 1 Peter 4.18. If the righteous scarcely be saved, amen, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Stay with me. We're going to go into the next slide. Okay, praise the Lord. Listen, the sinner's prayer, the modern church social club, that's what the churches of today have turned into. A modern church social club that just says, say a quick sinner's prayer and you're forever with Jesus no matter what you do here on earth. That is blasphemy. Eternal security uh, without conditions is blasphemy. Amen. Okay, the gospel says you need to come to the cross as you are and then you need to change. You need to repent. Amen. You need to leave dead to that wicked, filthy sinner that you were. Let's go to Colossians 3 through, uh, excuse me, Colossians 3, 5a says mortify, which means deaden therefore your members which are upon the earth. Did you hear that? Mortify. You must mortify the sins and the effect and, and the lust thereof on the earth. Not when you get to heaven. Some people say, oh, you're going to be only holy when you get to heaven. That is one of the biggest lies that we've ever heard. Galatians 2.20 says, listen closely, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I live now in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You must crucify your flesh. It's abundantly clear. If the old man is dead, the man that sins, you are left alive. A man that does not willfully sin here listen romans 8 13 for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if 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 you live through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live if you mortify the deeds of the body if you mortify sin you shall live unto christ forever 
But if you don't and you live after the flesh, Romans 8.13 says you die. It's right there. Okay, let's continue. If you want to be covered by the blood, there is conditions. And you must understand what they are. Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Wait a minute. He lived without spot. See, Jim, he's the only one that was spotless and blameless. No, no, no. Listen to me closely. First John 2, 6 says, He that says he abides in him ought himself to walk as Jesus walked. If you say you're abiding in Jesus, you need to walk just like him. Read First John 2, 6. James 1, 27 says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widow in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You must keep yourself unspotted for the world or you don't have salvation, period. Colossians 3, 5 through 10. Let's go to it. Here we go. Mortify therefore your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, covetousness, which is idolatry, for these that for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Are you a child of disobedience? Do you believe you're a child of God? If you're a child of disobedience, the wrath of God comes upon you, Colossians 3 6. John 3 36 says, The ones that don't obey God, the wrath, the hatred of God abides on them. Stop you, God loves everybody. God's love is available to everybody, but God doesn't love everybody. People go to hell. For their wickedness, their disobedience. It says, the wrath of God comes unto them that are disobedient. Colossians 3, 7, in which ye also walked sometime, as in past, when you lived in them. But now you also put off all these sins. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. And that you have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Have you put on the new man? Are you walking in the spirit of God or are you a wicked sinner? That is the question. Galatians 2, 17 and 18. Let's continue. But if... While we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build against the saints which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You cannot go back to sin once you've stopped. Listen, don't bring saved sinners in the church. It's completely clear. Ezekiel 44, 6 through 13 explains this eloquently. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even the house of Israel, which were the believers, thus saith the Lord, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, and that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, those are sinners, to be in my sanctuary, my church, to pollute it, even my house, when you are for my bread and the fat of the blood and you can say communion now right you go to communion you're in wicked sin and your pastor is a sinner and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations and ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things but you have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves ezekiel 44 9 to 13 thus saith the lord no stranger uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised shall enter my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel and the Levites that have gone away far from me when Israel went astray which went astray away from me after their idols they shall even bear their iniquity yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house they shall slay the burnt offerings and the sacrifices for the people and they shall stand before them to minister unto them because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity, caused the believers to fall into iniquity. That's what these pastors are doing to most of you. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, says the Lord, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near me to do office of a priest unto me, nor come near any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. Are you in an abominable church? that lies, cheats, and steals, and says you're going to heaven even if you're in sin. Let's go to uh, Exodus 34. Um, uh, let's go to, excuse me, um, 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And are ye puffed up, and have you not mourned? 
that ye hath done this deed that might be taken away among you? For I verily, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory in false church, this is what he's saying, 1 Corinthians 5, 6 onward, your glory in is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little bit of sin, just putting up with that sinner for the smallest amount of time will get you right to hell. A little sin leavens a whole lump. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. You must be spotless for Christ. Don't make that mistake that think that he covers you in your sin. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. He became a sin offering. He became a sacrifice for us on that cross. Oh yes, his love is available to everybody. But don't you lie and say he loves everybody just the way they are. That's a damnable lie. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I run unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But I have now written unto you not to keep company. Listen, not to even keep company if a man that is called a brother be a fornicator, covetous, or an idolater, or railer or drunkard, or an extortioner, which such one do not eat. Don't even eat with them. So if somebody is a sinner, you don't even eat with them if they think they're a brother. Are you kidding? For what time, uh, For what have I to do with judge them that are, out, that are without? Do you not judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among you the wicked person. Put among, away from among you that wicked pastor, that wicked person that's sitting next to you in that pew that you believe is saved along with you. Amen? This is a harsh message, but this is the truth. Let's continue. If you fellowship with sinners, you have no understanding, and you are in sin by association. Please stop hating instruction. I'll end this slide with Psalm 50, 16 to 19. But unto the wicked God says, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, so that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing you hate instruction, and cast my words behind me. When thou saw a thief, thou contendest with him, and being a partaker with adulterers, thou giveth thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. I pray that you listen to this and you're convicted that you don't run to evil. Amen? Okay, for the rest of the slides, I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles out. You can pause this um, recording. Um, we've covered quite a bit there, and I want to kind of just go through a few more slides, but the church are not sinners. Don't let the false pastors in the emergent Main Street churches today say, oh, this is a place for sinners. Just sit in the pews. No, 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 no. Isaiah 1, 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You do not want to fall under this category you don't want to provoke the lord to anger you are a child of disobedience if you believe that you're a saved sinner sitting underneath a pastor in quotes of course that tells you that you know you'll just keep on getting better and better and we all sin every day and all this other stuff you need to get out of that church you need to rebuke the pastor and try to bring as many people with you most people won't go because they want their ears tickled and I pray and I pray and I pray that you understand. The slide coming up is going to show us what warnings were given to the churches. Here we go. Five out of the seven churches of Revelation were in sin and they had to repent or they would have gone to hell. You have Number one, you can have your first love and leave them. Revelation 2, verse 1 through 7. You can come to Jesus and leave them. Number two, you can be in right standing, yet you still have to overcome. Read Revelation 2, 8 through 11. You can have faith, yet need to repent before Jesus becomes your enemy. He'll work against you. Revelation 2, 12 to 17, if you blaspheme him and live in sin while you think you're with him. You can be in a church that allows a Jezebel. Get out. Revelation 2, 18 to 29. You can be cleaned, entered into the book of life. Beating Romans 3.23 by the blood of Jesus, yet wander being blotted out for eternity over defilements. The door can be opened. 
just overcome Revelation 3, 7 through 13. You can be baptized, saved into Jesus' body, as 1 Corinthians says, yet be vomited out by the very baptizer, Revelation and Romans. If you believe in once saved, always saved, you're a liar. Do not believe that once you uh, you know, come to Jesus and you might be living holy for a while, that if you go back into sin, remember the wages of sin is death. The soul that sinneth dies. Make no mistake about that. And any of you that are false evangelists out there, this goes for anybody, so that's why I put it in there. If you call yourself an evangelist or a Christian and don't rebuke sin and or you fellowship with sinners, you hanging out with sinners, you are a self-appointed fraud and you will not go unpunished. We're going to go to 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Let's go. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing uh, at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Most of those listening to me have turned their ears unto fables and will perish. And I don't want you to do that. That's why I'm doing these videos. Fel read Proverbs 11.21. Also, fellowshipping with sinners is always wrong, whether you be an evangelist or any other church member. Remember, you must be separate. We have plenty of teachings uh, that go along with all these, so we'll post those below for you, okay? The lukewarm church, to conclude here, the lukewarm church is everywhere, as I said, at almost every street corner and even on every back road. There used to be a lot more churches that were living holy, well, some more, not a lot more, but a lot more than there are now anyway, way back in the day. But now nobody has fear of God, reverence of God, and you will be vomited out with that false church if you continue to sit in it and believe you're a saved sinner. Revelation three fourteen through 22 says, and to the angel of the church of the Lacedonians, right, listen, speaking to the church, these sayings says, the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works. You have to have perfect works. Neither are they cold nor hot. I could wish they were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, Christian, in quotes, neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's what Jesus says. He's going to spew you out of his mouth if you're just a part-time lukewarm sinning Christian. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, blind, poor, and naked. I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you have to be clothed in yourself that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Anoint your eyes what I saw that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Amen. Are you overcoming? That's the question. Are you overcoming? This is how you know Jesus. If you keep his commandments, 1 John 2, 3 through 6, we'll scroll here. Do you keep his commandments? That's how you know him. If you sin, you don't keep his commandments. Look at 1 John 2, 4. He that says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. I plead with you. But whosoever keeps his word in him, the love of God is protect, uh, perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. How? If we keep his commandments, you know you're in God. He that says... He abides in Jesus, ought himself to walk even as he walked. Remember, we had that, posted that before. Um, I'm going to post now 1 John 3, 3 through 10. Praise the Lord. 1 John 3, 3 through 10. And this is another set of verses that you'll never hear in these emergent false churches. And I just plead with you, come out of them. If you're not getting this... Uh, Whole counsel of God come out. Every man that has hope, here we go, 1 John 3, 3. Every man that has hope in him purifies himself, even as he, Jesus, is pure. You must do it yourself. Jesus will help you if you are striving, if you are being perfect biblically. Whoever commits sin is a transgressor of also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him, is no sin. Praise the Lord. First John 3, 6 says, Whosoever abides in him, in Jesus, does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him, 
neither known him. I'd like to hear one of these false pastors talk that. Everybody would leave, not leave a dime. First John 3, 7 says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who does righteousness is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. First John 3, 8, he that commits sin is of the devil. Are you a devil that sins? For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. As is sin destroyed in your life? First John 3, 9 says, Whoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his sin remains, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit's not going to lead you to sin. First John 3, 10, And this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whoever does not righteousness is not of God. If you sin, you're not of God. Neither he that loves not his brother. You need godly sorrow, 2 Corinthians 7, 10 through 11, that works repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world works death. Listen to what repentance is. This selfsame thing, for behold, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it's wrought in you. Yeah, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what revenge in all things you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. I pray this edified you. We'll be doing about two or three dozen videos on this subject. Please visit us at eternalevangelism.com. And remember, Jesus is Lord and he must be obeyed.